Welcome to the Interstate 15 State Route 78 Managed Lanes Direct Connectors Virtual Public Scoping Meeting. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. This meeting is expected to take place between 5.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. in a virtual format. Several agencies have partnered on this project, including the California Department of Transportation District 11, also known as Caltrans, the San Diego Association of Governments, also known as SANDAG, our partners at the Federal Highway Administration, the City of San Marcos, and the consultants working under the direction of these agencies. For those who may be experiencing any audio issues, please ensure that you have connected your computer's audio. The project team can also support you in several ways. You can connect and listen to this public meeting via telephone. Simply call 669-900-9128 to listen to the presentation via phone. You will need to also include the webinar ID and passcode as shown on the screen. Please be sure to write this down. For any additional technical or audio issues, please email sr78 at keepsandiegomoving.com and include technical support in the subject line. A member of the product team will get back to you shortly. If at any time you are disconnected from this meeting, you can reconnect by visiting www.keepsandiegomoving.com and click the widget for our virtual engagement hub. The public meeting will be displayed in the main page. Please know that a copy of tonight's recorded presentation will be posted on the project website within three business days. The project team has secured the support of a live Spanish translator. Simply click the globe button near the bottom of your screen to turn on the live Spanish translation. If you need more support, please send an email to sr78 at keepsandiegomoving.com with Spanish support in the subject line. El equipo del proyecto cuenta con el apoyo de un intérprete simultáneo en español. Solo tiene que hacer clic en el globo terráqueo que está en la parte inferior de su pantalla para activar la interpretación simultánea. Si necesita más asistencia, por favor escribe a sr78.keepsandiegomoving.com con la frase Soporte en Español en la línea del asunto. Many of you have already visited our project website, but for those who may not know, all the project information is available at www.keepsandiegomoving.com slash SR78. Additionally, you may access our new virtual engagement tools via this website. Simply click one of the widgets circled in this screenshot. This new virtual engagement hub is a great place to contact the project team, view or request information, and submit official public scoping comments. The new virtual engagement hub has a great tools enabling you to provide your public comment or questions. These are new tools for the project team and we are excited to share them with you. Again, if you travel to our website, keepsandiegomoving.com slash SR78 and click the widget we showed you in the previous screen, you'll be taken to the new virtual engagement hub. Once there, simply click the comment box to be taken to an interactive project map. You can drop your comments into specific areas of the map and signify if the comment is related to the environment, traffic, transit, active transportation, or just a general comment or suggestion. Questions and comments submitted via the virtual engagement hub will be incorporated as part of the environmental documentation for the public scoping period. There are a few key meeting details the product team would like to review for you tonight. First, the meeting is scheduled for two hours. The meeting began at 5.30 and will end at 7.30. Second, the meeting will be held presentation style. All attendees will be muted upon entry and will remain muted for the duration of the virtual public scoping meeting. If you have any comments or questions, please use the Zoom question and answer function to chat with the project team. Attendees will not be able to see other attendees or their questions. Explanation on how to use the question and answer function and other methods for interaction will occur throughout the presentation. Please note that questions or comments submitted tonight via Zoom are not considered official public comment. Official public comment can be submitted four ways, which will be explained shortly. Last, this meeting is being recorded and a copy of the recorded presentation will be posted on the project website within three business days. I would like to review tonight's schedule with you so you can understand what to expect of this meeting. 
My name is Kara Kong, and I support communications and public outreach for Caltrans, Sandag, and the City of San Marcos for this project. In just another minute, the project manager, Kareem Scarlett, will introduce some of our key project team members. Kareem will also review how to submit questions and comments shortly. At approximately 5.45, Alan Kossip, the North County Quarter Director for the 78 Corridor, will provide an opening statement and words of welcome. At about 5.50, the project team will play slides covering key project information and the environmental process for this project. This portion of the project is expected to take approximately 30 minutes. Please note that this portion of the presentation was recorded prior to this meeting. The project team wanted to ensure a seamless viewing experience for you. By 6.20, the pre-recorded portion of the presentation will end and will take an approximate 10 minute break. At about 6.30, the project team will provide a repeat viewing of the project information and process, environmental process slides. At about seven o'clock, Kareem Scarlett will provide a short thank you. At 7.05, Kareem Scarlett and Alan Cossip will verbally respond to frequently asked questions compiled throughout tonight's meeting. The meeting will end promptly at 7.30 p.m. I will now hand over project team introductions to Kareem Scarlett, the Caltrans I-15 State Route 78 Managed Lanes Direct Connectors Project Manager. Thank you, Kara, and good evening, everyone. The project team appreciates you taking the time to join us tonight. Normally, the project team would host an in-person public scoping meeting, where as an attendee, you would have the opportunity to speak to teams, uh, a team of experts in person and review project exhibits at your leisure. However, as we continue to operate in unprecedented times, the project team sees tonight as a new way of sharing information and collecting your feedback. The team also helps that you take the time to review the new virtual engagement hub that Kara referred to earlier. The project team continues to evolve and grow and how we engage the public, and we would like to hear your feedback on these new tools. I will qu quickly review the key team members you will hear from tonight and interact as well. Please note, uh, this display unfortunately does not show the entire project team. There are several Caltrans, Sandag, City of San Marcos, and consultant team members who are assisting behind the scenes to support tonight's meeting. Alan Kossip is with Caltrans District 11 and serves as the corridor director for the North County corridors, which include SR 76, 78, 56, and I-5. You will meet Alan in just a few minutes. Uh, next, my name is Kareem Scarlett, and I serve as the Caltrans project manager for this project, as well as for the SR 76 and 78 corridors. Ellen Ranker, is the environmental lead for the project. She will lead this effort for the environmental compliance uh, and develop the project's uh, draft environmental document. Josh Reese is the Caltrans design manager. Joshua serves as the technical and design expert for the project, as well as for the SR 76 and 78 corridors. Ed Dean is the deputy city engineer for the city of San Marcos. The City of San Marcos is a key partner um, as the project is proposed to incorporate interchange and surface streets improvements critical to improving local access to and from SR 78, as well as improving nearby connectivity and access. Caridad Sanchez is the Communications and Government Affairs Chief with Caltrans District 11. Teddy Jackson joins us from the Sandag Association of the Government, um, our regional transportation planning agency. Uh, this project is a critical component to Sandag's vision um, for how our region's transportation network is anticipated to grow over the next several decades. And last, we have, a, we have several team members from our project's communications and public outreach team. Kara Kong, who you met with earlier, is assisting with meeting logistics, uh, Jeff Mayer is providing technical support, and Stephanie Tells is providing Spanish, Spanish language support. These team members will also assist with responding to your questions. We are excited to get the project portion of this meeting underway. 
Caltrans released the project's notice of preparation on Monday, October 19th. The notice of preparation lets the public know that the official public scoping comment period has commenced. This meeting is being held within the official public scoping period. Official comments can be submitted four ways during the minimum 30 days uh, public scoping com uh, comment period um, between October 19th and November 20th. One, through our new virtual engagement hub. Two, sent via email. Three, submitted via regular mail by midnight on November 20th. And last, uh, you may also call 888-547-1161 and state that your following comments are intended for inclusion in the public scoping period. Your comments will be transcribed and included as part of the environmental documentation for this project. To be clear, all questions and comments are welcome through all the ways the project team strives to engage you. The project team will, will try to address any comments that, is, that are made uh, within the format that the comment is received. For example, comments received from Facebook, Facebook will be responded via Facebook. In order to be considered as part of the environmental documentation for this project, the project team asks that your comments and ideas be submitted through the four methods listed on the screen and identified on the project website. As, as part of tonight's presentation, our project team is standing by to answer any questions you may have. Please send all your questions via Zoom uh, via the Zoom question and answer function. This button is displayed at the bottom of the Zoom window and looks like two speech bubbles. The project, te project team of experts will respond to your question and comments before the meeting concludes tonight. Again, these questions and comments submitted via Zoom will not be considered as official public comment. And please note, the project experts will also be available beyond tonight and the official public uh, scoping period. The team is always available to address your questions and comments throughout the life cycle of the proposed project. Now I would like to introduce Alan Costa, the Caltrans North County Corridor Director to say a few words. Good evening and thank you, Kareem. Um, welcome to the Notice of Preparation public meeting for the 7815 Managed Lanes Corridor Project. I am Alan Kossop, the SR78 Corridor Director for Caltrans. And I think one of the things I'll start with is this very exciting time for transportation in general. Um, lots of new technologies, new solutions, and really a new approach um, from getting people in an integrated manner from their house to their destination. And in order to do that, um, we need to integrate uh, modes, right? And, and historically, maybe these modes were built in isolation. And uh, this starts, right? This integration starts with integrating agencies. And so hopefully tonight, just in the kickoff that Kareem just did, you get a, a chance to see here are three or four uh, agencies all working together to try to find the right solution in this location. And I think we all agree um, as we drive through this area, um, what a nightmare this, this area can be. Um, it, you know, it's not unusual for congestion to, to back up three, four miles to the west on 78 and to the south on, on I-15. And so this project is trying to, to find solutions to that. And as, as, um, as Kareem pointed out, uh, we, point, we, Caltrans as the lead agency, released the notice of preparation for an environmental studies for this project. Uh, earlier this month. Uh, it's a 30-day pu public comment period, uh, which includes tonight's meeting. And during that time, we're out, we're reaching out to the public and stakeholders to get a better understanding of the issues and concerns that you would like to see included in the project studies. Um, it's so important, uh, you know, to, to, for us to understand your needs, your concerns, and your ideas so that we can build the best project possible. Um, and that, you know, what you're going to see tonight is very conceptual um, because we're at the beginning of the process. Uh, so we start with this uh, listening sessions, essentially. Um, 
so that as we move forward into the studies and the analysis phase, we're, we're addressing your needs to begin with um, and your concerns. Subsequent, um, once we're done with the comment period in 30 days, formal studies will begin. Um, and then the results of those studies are presented in a draft environmental document um, to be re released to the public in, in 2022. And so um, what, you, what we're doing over this 30 days really does shape um, the next couple of years. And then uh, at the end of the two years, you'll see the results of that process. And you'll be given another opportunity to provide comments um, uh, on the results. So in closing, um, appreciate your attendance, appreciate your effort. It's so it's really, really is important. Um, as I said, understanding your thoughts, ideas, and concerns is a critical step for us to develop the best project. Um, although you're seeing a project that, that it seems like it's in isolation to a bigger solution, um, one of the things we'll talk about tonight is how the region and Caltrans are looking at a series of improvements in the whole corridor. Um, and it's an integrated multimodal solution, includes transit, active transportation, flexible fleets. Today's project is just one element of that overall vision. Um, so when you, when you see this project, keep that in mind. This overall vision really is designed to move people faster, cleaner, and fairer. Thank you for your time tonight. And we look forward to working with you on this very important project. Now let's begin with the discussion on the project information and environmental process. Several agencies are partnered on the development of this project, including Caltrans, Sandang, the City of San Marcos, and the Federal Highway Administration, and the consultants working under the direction of these agencies. Tonight, we will cover one, why are we here? Two, conceptual purpose and need for the project. Three, common features of these potential alternatives. Four, the alternatives themselves, and five, we will be going over the environmental regulations, resources, and potential impact. So why are we here? The project team is starting the environmental review process for the proposed 1578 managed lanes direct connector project. This project explores building managed lanes direct connectors between the existing I-15 express lanes and SR-78. This project also proposes extending the managed lanes for about three miles onto SR-78, adding operational improvements, and constructing interchange, surface street, and mobility improvements to Woodland Parkway, Barham Drive, and Rancheros Drive in the city of San Marcos. This project, should a build alternative be selected, is anticipated to cost between $400 and $500 million through construction. The project is currently in the environmental review process. This phase is important in evaluating the potential environmental impacts, mitigation, and benefits of a project to ensure compliance with federal, state, and local environmental laws. The environmental review phase will also result in a preferred alternative. This project is funded through the design phase and could be ready for construction as early as 2025. Should a build alternative be selected, and funding for construction be identified. This project's environmental document will consist of an environmental impact report as required by the California Environmental Quality Act and in an environmental assessment as required by the National Environmental Policy Act. These two laws, also known as CEQA and NEPA, establish protection of the environment as a national and state priority mandating that the environmental impacts must be considered before any action or project is undertaken that could significantly affect the environment. This environmental document will showcase, assess, and present compliance with all other environmental laws, statutes, regulations, and considerations. This slide reviews the key steps in the environmental process. Determining and balancing environmental, economic, and engineering decisions require critical input from partner resource agencies, local jurisdictions, technical experts, and you, the general public, at several steps along the way. The public scoping comment period, which the project is in, solicits input from these various audiences and helps the project development team 
make informed decisions regarding which technical studies to conduct and determine the scope of the proposed alternative. If the public scoping comment period is designed to ask the question, what should the project team study, then the next critical public input milestone is at the release of the draft environmental document. The project team currently anticipates releasing the draft environmental document in June 2022. And at this point, the project development team will ask stakeholders and the public, what do you think of the project team studies? The last major public milestone in this process is the release of the final environmental document. The final environmental document is the culmination of all the input from the public, technical studies, and key stakeholders, and is also when the project development team determines a preferred alternative and presents this recommendation to regional decision makers. Caltrans currently anticipates releasing the final environmental document in May 2023. As we mentioned before, your input is important to this process. Please use the following four ways to document your comments. And just as a reminder, comments submitted via Zoom will not be considered official public comments. Moving on to the conceptual purpose and need for this project. As you can see, the corridor has experienced a substantial amount of growth over the past 25 years. Although the growth rate is expected to slow, these communities will continue to grow in the future. This growth has been driven by the dramatic increase of master plan communities, job centers, expanding educational hubs, and other economic drivers. These increases in residents, jobs, and homes is straining the SR78 system, and in particular, the east end of the corridor near the 1578 interchange which is demonstrated in the following slide. The 1578 interchange is routinely reported to be one of the top five congested areas in San Diego County. This graphic shows that the east side of the corridor in fact carries the majority of the traffic delay along SR78. Much of this traffic is traveling to and from I-15 to access jobs along the regionally important I-15 corridor. This slide is showcasing the travel patterns of the westbound 78 users that go through the 1578 interchange. Over 55% of this traffic exits within the first three miles of SR78. Let's step back and highlight some of the larger regional and state efforts that must be considered during project development. Sandeg is currently updating the regional transportation plan. The 2021 Regional Plan will lay out a blueprint for how our region and the transportation network will grow over the next several decades. Congestion, social equity, and meeting federal and state mandates are the three key challenges that must be addressed by the 2021 Regional Plan. This project must also address those challenges, as it will be ultimately a part uh, of a greater transportation network that aims to be faster, fairer, and cleaner for all. You may be less aware that the state goes through a similar transportation planning process. While the wording between the California 2050 Transportation Plan and SANDEG may vary slightly, many of the same themes run through the shared goals and objectives. Both plans consider developing a robust, connected management lane system, improved transit and rail service, and developing a transformational active transportation network. Now let's walk through some of the existing challenges in the area. In this slide, the viewer is looking north at the 1578 interchange. Most people who travel this area regularly are aware of the congestion that occurs just before the interchange. Northbound I-15 express lanes users, represented by the orange line, must weave across all lanes in order to access the 78 connectors. Traffic getting on I-15 at Valley and 9th Street, represented by the blue line, have to weave over to avoid getting into the connector. 
These conflicting patterns, in addition to the large volume of through traffic, contribute to a substantial slowdown on a major north-south transportation facility. On the southbound side, you have eastbound 78 traffic merging onto southbound 15, represented by the orange line. Then you have southbound 15 traffic either continuing south or trying to exit at Valley Parkway, which is represented by the blue line. These conflicts contribute to the backup not only on southbound 15, but also on eastbound 78. In this aerial, we are facing toward the east, looking at the interchange. Eastbound 78 experiences a significant backup just before the connectors. In this situation, there is a substantial amount of volume seeking to merge onto southbound I-15. This is represented by the orange line. You also have through traffic heading eastbound on SO-78 and a high number of vehicles entering from the Nordahl on-ramp, represented by the blue line. Now we are facing the westbound direction along SR-78 looking at Nordahl Road in this aerial. A substantial amount of traffic is entering the westbound 78 at this location. This traffic comes from three sources, northbound 15, southbound 15, and downtown Escondido. This flow of traffic overwhelms this short stretch of SR-78 and causes a backup that overflows onto northbound and southbound 15. Additionally, traffic trying to access Nordahl Road which provides access to Palomar Medical Center and several large retail shopping centers further contribute to the traffic challenges in this. As the slides begin to briefly touch upon how SR-78 impacts access to and from local streets, I'd like to introduce Ed Dean, Deputy City Engineer for the City of San Marcos, to touch upon a few other traffic, connectivity, and access issues his city is experiencing in relation to SR-78. Welcome all, and thank you for joining us tonight. As Kareem was mentioning, local street improvements also need to be considered. People need to get on and off the freeway, and access to and from the freeway is as important as freeway flow. One great example of strain on our local system is Barm Drive. If any of you regularly travel Barm Drive during the morning and afternoon commute hours, you will experience the heavy traffic flow along this road. In addition to the large number of students and employee commuters traveling to and from the CSU San Marcos, there has also been a significant amount of residential and retail growth around the university to accommodate the expanding populations. Traffic patterns show that many people use Barham Drive to access State Route 78. Additionally, the number of lanes on Barham Drive shifts several times between CSU San Marcos and Woodland Parkway, further exacerbating the inefficiency of the road. Woodland Parkway under SR-78 is also a pinch point separating the community. Traffic from Barham Drive uses Woodland Parkway to not only access westbound 78, but also residential and commercial destinations on the north side of the freeway. The lack of connectivity and access to the freeway between the north and south sides is a need that the city feels needs to be addressed. Thank you, Ed. This review of the strain on the system helped the project development team in crafting a partial set of draft objectives. Ultimately, we want to build a project that supports multimodal access, moves more people, and can be managed to support future growth while reducing overall vehicle miles traveled through the corridor. A purpose and need statement is one of the key elements to understanding why a project is needed and the potential solutions that can address that need. The project need is identified as the transportation deficiency or problem. The, pr the project purpose is the set of goals and objectives that will provide a solution to that problem. The goals and objectives help clarify other influencing factors to ensure that any considered alternative would be a good fit for the community and its users. A purpose and need statement is the foundation of every transportation project and a refined purpose and need statement will help the project development team to develop a reasonable range of solutions to meet the needs and fulfill the project purpose. Now let's apply these concepts to the project. Based on what the project development team has learned about the project area, the conceptual purpose of this project is to provide a reliable transportation option that reduces travel times, 
encourages multi-occupant vehicle usage, and helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The project's purpose would also improve access to key employment, residential, and health and educational centers in the corridor, while supporting state and regional transportation goals of improving person throughput and reducing vehicle miles traveled. This conceptual purpose was drafted with the following need in mind. Over the past 25 years, the corridor has experienced a substantial amount of growth in its residential, job, and housing centers. This growth, coupled with a lack of transportation options, has placed a strain on the 1578 interchange and local streets. The lack of improved local connections, managed facilities, and options are affecting travel times and air pollution which are expected to increase while person throughput and mobility decrease. The project team and I have spent a lot of time reviewing the purpose and need. Your feedback on the conceptual purpose and need is critical. Please use the following four ways to submit your comments. Now let's get into the project description and review common features between the build alternatives. Please note, these common features are conceptual and may change based upon public feedback budget constraints, and environmental and traffic studies. Before I jump into the descriptions of the common features, I want to explain what managed lanes are. The term managed lanes has been referenced several times tonight already. Please watch the following animation. Uh, this short video helps to define managed lanes, what they are, how they work, and what are the benefits. What are managed lanes? You've probably heard this term and other terms that sound similar and wondered, what do these all mean? Managed lanes are a tool that help to reduce congestion by moving more people through a corridor at consistent travel speeds and with more reliable travel times. That sounds great, but how do they do that? Managed lanes offer choice and flexibility. One strategy is to prioritize access to carpoolers, van pullers, or transit vehicles. These are often called high occupancy vehicles or HOVs. When space permits in the managed lanes, another strategy includes allowing solo drivers to pay a fee to use the lanes as a time savings alternative to the regular lanes. This is sometimes referred to as a priced express lane or a high occupancy toll lane. Solo drivers in San Diego are familiar with paying this type of fee through the fast track system. Fees can change based on the level of congestion. For example, fees are likely to be set higher during the morning and afternoon peak commutes to meet demand and reduce congestion. These strategies, especially paired with technology, provide great tools that can help to control the level of traffic, provide reliable travel times, and reduce congestion all in real time. Additionally, collected fees go right back into keeping the managed lane system operating reliably and into programs and projects that provide additional choices to get around all within the corridor. Lastly, because most vehicles are carrying more than one person, managed lanes immediately increase the number of people moving through the corridor. That's what we call a win-win. The best part about managed lanes is that they are flexible. The prioritization policies can be updated to adapt to changing commuter patterns, traveler behaviors, and evolving technology, standing the test of time and providing long-term time savings for all travelers. For example, on average, current I-15 express lane users continue to enjoy up to a 50% reduction in travel times during peak commute hours from before the express lanes were built. What would you do with up to another 40 minutes a day? Get home in time for dinner? Exercise? Learn a new skill? A robust connected managed lane system is part of the regional and state vision for connecting all corners of our communities, reducing congestion, enhancing and providing choices for how people travel, and providing a reliable overall transportation network that makes it easier for everybody to get to the places that matter most. Now that we have a definition for the managed lanes, I will go over the common features for all the build alternatives. One of the largest components of this project is the proposed addition of a new managed lanes direct connector between the I-15 express lanes and SR-78. There would be one new direct connector that would accommodate both directions of travel. The connector would accommodate northbound I-15 express lanes users wanting to connect to westbound SR-78 and eastbound SR-78 users connecting to southbound I-15 express lanes. The existing connectors would remain in their current configuration. The new direct connector would connect to approximately three miles of new managed lanes on SR-78 
constructing one lane in each direction between approximately the 1578 interchange and San Marcos Boulevard. An auxiliary lane is proposed between Nordahl Road and Woodland Parkway in the westbound direction. This common feature is suggested to help facilitate traffic operations and ease the strain of the high volume of traffic overwhelming the westbound 78 immediately west of the 1578 interchange. Depending on the final scope of this project, there is one design variation that would require the replacement of the highway bridge over San Marcos Creek. If the ultimate scope of the project were to include the extension of the managed lanes all the way to San Marcos Boulevard, the replacement of this bridge would be included to support the new managed lanes. For the last couple of slides, I will hand over the presentation to Ed Dean with the City of San Marcos once more. Thank you, Kareem. One of the common features of any potential project build would include the relocation of the existing on-ramp to eastbound SR-78 from Barm Drive. This on-ramp would need to be moved in order to accommodate a new managed lane in each direction of SR-78. The existing on-ramp will not fit in the current location in a way that meets design standards. Additionally, growth near Barm Drive, west of Woodland Parkway, is expected to increase traffic using the on-ramp. Relocating the Barm Drive eastbound on-ramp further to the west would allow additional capacity on the ramp, increase the efficiency of the interchange, and better serve the existing and future travel demands. Similar to Barm Drive on the south side of the road, a common feature of the project is proposed along Rancheros Drive near the westbound on and off ramps to and from Woodland Parkway. The on and off ramps and Rancheros Drive must also be adjusted and realigned to accommodate for new managed lanes. Additionally, as populations that travel to and from our community are expected to grow, the proposed improvements to this on and off ramp would also create additional capacity on the ramp, increasing the efficiency of the interchange and better serve the existing and future travel demands. Another proposed common feature is to realign and widen Barm Drive between Lamori Road and Woodland Parkway. This is a key route for freeway access to and from the increasing development near CSU San Marcos. Improving this road will increase access to one of our major economic centers. In one of the most exciting common features and opportunities of this project is the possibility of modifying or replacing the Woodland Parkway undercrossing should a build alternative be selected. Woodland Parkway is currently a bottleneck that separates our community north and south of the freeway. This project could improve the undercrossing and connect key residential and commercial areas north of the freeway to our growing education and employment centers south of the freeway. Improving the undercrossing and Barham Drive would also allow the city and Caltrans to add a Class 2 bikeway between Lamori Road and Rancheros Drive. This new path could close a major gap in our local bike network sync up and connect the university with Inland Rail Trail bike path along the Sprinter line and provide additional ways for our community members to move around town. Thanks, Ed. There are a lot of common features proposed in the project build alternatives. All this can be reviewed again by watching this recorded public scoping meeting or visiting keepsandiegomoving.com backslash SR78. Please note, these common features are conceptual and may change based upon public feedback, budget constraints, and environmental and traffic settings. Now that we've reviewed the common features, let's review the preliminary alternatives. The main difference between the two build alternatives is that one would allow fast track users to utilize the new lane, while the other one would not. The third alternative is the no build. At the heart of the environmental process is how the conceptual purpose and need, proposed project, and preliminary alternatives are used in the context of environmental regulations, resources, and potential impacts that are requirements to adhere to, consider, and study. As shown previously, CEQA and NEPA are the two laws that promote informed decision making 
to assist in the examination of the impacts and benefits of a potential project before deciding on an alternative to build. The draft EIR EA will present the assessment of numerous resources. The project development team will review the project area and pay close attention to the biological resources, community and social equity, cultural and historic properties, greenhouse gases and vehicle miles traveled, noise, and visual slash landscape resources, among numerous other studies to ensure the proper assessment of the impacts and benefits of the proposed project. The information found by the project development team will be summarized in the draft environmental document set to be released in June of 2022. This is an urban area and is very biologically diverse with animals, plants, wetlands, and other ecosystems. These biological resources will be captured in the project's natural environmental study. The ecosystem surrounded by the San Marcos Creek and other tributaries is important to the local plant and wildlife. Previous studies have shown other wetlands within the project footprint may still need to be protected. The community itself and its attributes need to be studied and understood. The community impact assessment looks at social and economic impacts in addition to land use, community character and cohesion, parks and recreation, and state, regional, local plans and programs. The study covers business impacts, noise and visual changes, including simulations from the visual impact study, environmental justice, a summary of the project's draft relocation impact study, and any local community improvements such as pedestrian and bicycle facilities and how they may support the concept of complete streets. It also records community outreach, such as the meeting we are having tonight. Additionally, as discussed earlier with our managed lanes animation, any fees associated with managed lanes usage by solar drivers will be studied to gauge its impact on the community. This is an established community with roots and many historic buildings that are over 50 years old. Also, this area is known for being used by the earliest humans and animals. Caltrans complies with federal and state laws that protect cultural uh, resources significant in American archeology, span uh, architecture, history, culture, and engineering. Caltrans also coordinates with local tribal communities and provides feedback to the Caltrans State Headquarters for any cultural or historic findings. The summary of the information will be presented in the draft environmental document. Motor vehicles are a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. Given the large contribution of the transportation sector to California's GHG emissions, Caltrans is very serious about contributing to solutions that reduce GHG. The study for GHG slash VMT will assist GHG emissions by measuring the amount of vehicle miles traveled produced by a project. Measuring vehicle miles traveled changes the way project impacts are analyzed. Rather than measure the impact of a project on drivers, it measures the impact of driving on the environment. These results will be presented in the draft environmental document for public input. The Caltrans Environmental Engineering Group will conduct a noise study report which measures the sound by placing sound metering devices along the project. That information feeds into the preparation of a preliminary noise abatement decision report, also known as NADER. The NADER is the document that provides decision makers the information needed to decide if and where sound walls are to be built. The visual changes you will see with the proposed project will be studied. Our visual resource branch will work with the designers to prepare the visual impact assessment. Any new structures, sound or retaining walls, landscape or other features will be presented as a visual simulation as part of the draft environmental document. These simulations help the community understand the impact the project will have on the surrounding neighborhood. The Visual Resource Group will also work with a Caltrans biologist and landscape architect to ensure landscaping meets all laws and requirements. This is a good summary and a sample list of anticipated environmental and technical studies that our project development team 
is anticipating preparing as part of the draft environmental document. We want to hear from you. Are we preparing and studying the right things? We want to hear from the community if there are other topics we should be studying. As a reminder, this presentation and this list will be posted on the project website if you wish to come back to consult this list. Thank you for participating in tonight's presentation with live and pre-recorded project information. The project team and I have shared quite a bit of information with you tonight. All this information will be posted on the project website and this meeting is being recorded um, and will be available within three business days. The public scoping period is critical and one of the first steps of the environmental process. The minimum 30-day public scoping period began on Monday, October 19th when Caltrans filed the project's notice of preparation to prepare an environmental document to analyze this proposed project. All comments received during the public scoping period will shape and be summarized in the project's draft environmental document. As we've emphasized at several points tonight, public input is instrumental in this process. And keep your chats coming in, as the question and answer portion will begin shortly. This question and answer portion will not be recorded for the YouTube edition of this meeting. All this information is accessible from the project's website. I will see you after a short break.